so um, because some of the um, guy has been to the um, water um, birth of the feathers, right? So you have seen uh, Dylan doing a bit of uh, class detection, so I will be moving very quickly here. Um, everyone else didn't need to catch up. So basically in V12, we have um, the supported data is services, is mean like pipelines, water nodes, and links. Uh, toward the end of V12, as of last year, we put in uh, the checks for trimesters, and then in V14, we're gonna do TIM. So basically, we cover all the uh, 12B uh, BIM objects types in our class detection. So a uh, quick look at the menu here. Um, basically, very simple, you go to the BIM, go to check class, uh, class detection, you only have two options, the detection and the rules. Um, the rules, um, it's just very hierarchy. At the top is all the rule sets, and then each time you check for uh, classes, you run a set of rules, and under the each set of rules, you have uh, individual rules. Here's very uh, brief. The top here, just the name and description. Um, and then the information about um, what you check for and what you check against. So basically what I'm saying is like, you, what you're checking for is the dynamic kind of objects. And what you check against is the statics, like the teams or some sort of like uh, not very important strings. Um, basically these parameter here is for links or pipes. Um, this one apply for the uh, dynamic objects. Uh, again, the node and pit information here is for the dynamic objects. Uh, we added the trimest in, so the trimest clearance is mean you give the each of the trimest a buffer, so it's nothing can come near it. Um, very similar to the tin, so we have the uh, above and below the tin clearance. So it's mean like if you have services and you define the rules to say nothing can come within one meter of the tin, then that's the number you need to put in. All right, um, the panel itself, very simple. It's uh, got a data source. Um, you pick a rule set here, and then is the standard conversion when you have a um, curved pipe or something, so you just call to arc them, and then the output models. Uh, you have the option to run the same panel again and again, so we have a tick box here to say you can clean all these models. And we have the report here, so you can report in either the XML, HTML, and the PDF. All right, this, is, this one is causing a little bit of confusion about how the rules are being applied to each of the data sets. So basically, um, the big circle here is your data source, right? Um, and then the data being selected using names. So you need to have a very good naming convention here. So basically we use the model and string names convention. Um, you go through the data source and you get all the data to check for. And then again, you, you go and find all the data you checked against. And then whatever the data in this set here being canceled out to the data to check for because you, want, you don't want to have your services checking against themselves because they will be sit on top of each other. So it means you have four positive. And then all, uh, all the tolerance, as you see in the previous slices, are being applied for the four sets, not the against. So against set has got nothing around them. Um, so it, two kind of checks here, direct clash. It means two pipe cutting each other. That's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, the main focus here we do have here is basically the tolerance violation. So each of these objects you want to check for, you have a buffer around them. So you can define your buffer using your rules. And then if any of the other object violating this tolerance or the light blue circle around it, it means you have a clash. All right, um, live demo. I'm gonna give you a quick demo with Alan Gray. <laughs> this one is uh, the uh, crash detection. 
As long as you sit there and not touching anything, it should be all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Wait, just one. <laughs> I have some fight. All right, uh, to save time, so I just run the option. It's already have everything filled in here. So you have a data source. You select a, um, a rule set here, and then you put some parameter in here. And I just clear the output windows here. And you run the checks. So it just uh, pop up a report here. You can see like all, all the details about the classes here. And if you run through and go to each of these services, you can see that you have a class here. So it's very simple. Just click one button, and then you can, again, you can pick different rules. So you can view all these rules over the time as well. So that's it, it's pretty simple. And um, yeah, basically, I don't have any surprises for you guys this time because we change the process here. So when we do some, w w if we want to do something, then we need to propose it to Lee and Alan and they have to decide, okay, we should do it or not. So I don't have any hidden variables or anything. So it's, it's pretty kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what, what I do instead? I have a new wife. But anyway, if you look at um, if you look at these uh, new sets of icons here, best for you guys. Thank you. <laughs>